Hi, this is Dylan from Rebounder. Uh, check out my interview on Mr. Indie and listen to Rebounder's new song, Young Folks, on the internet forever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've been playing music my whole life. We always played music, me and my brother. And we played in a lot of like friends' bands, kind of backing them up, guitar and drums, touring around in their bands. And then at a certain point, we decided to stop all, we were writing songs from a very young age, but we never put them out. We're, and then after going on tour for a while and other people's things, we decided to come home to the studio and try to learn how to record our own songs. And, uh, and then growing up, we were really big fans of all the garage rock stuff, you know, which now people call it indie sleaze, but you know, Strokes, Arctic Monkeys, that was our whole thing. And then these days we're really into Licky Lee and a handful of other kind of important artists to us. Really like Licky Lee, she's like a big influence on us. Nancy Sinatra is a big influence on us. A lot of these bands from France are a big influence on us, like Papoos and Parcels, um, Oracle Sisters. And then Rebounder is kind of the culmination of like all these different music that we were listening to and touring that we were doing. I was like, we're gonna, I'm just gonna sit here and record the songs. And if they're good enough, the recordings, then we can like go play some shows. And then it kind of like slowly came together. I wrote that song with my friend Holden Jaffe, who's in a band called Delwater Gap. We made the song together. I made the bass line first. There was like a party happening in my apartment and I was like in my room and I was like, I gotta record this really quickly so I can leave. And then I recorded it, then I was like, all right, I'm gonna come back to this. And then I came back to it. Yeah, that song, that song is kind of about, in New York, growing up in the city, there's all these like very fancy people. So fancy, they're always at the after party. They're always, you know, VIP. And I thought we'd write a song about that because I thought it was kind of funny. That's what that song is. Um, and the rest of yeah, the whole EP was recorded in, in my bedroom. I just programmed all the drums. I think Slow Angel has real drums. I, I played those in my friend's room, but made it in my laptop and all those songs are kind of about going out in New York and going to the bar and having a good time with your friends because at the time that was a big part of our lives and uh, and those were kind of the songs we played in all the first Rebounder shows and we still play a lot of those songs and Japanese posters kind of keeps on doing its thing. Jesse and I are really good friends. He's one of my best friends. I'm such a big fan of his music. Actually, I was just going to get this coffee in New York and at the coffee shop, they were playing The Neighborhood. And I was always so excited because I love The Neighborhood. I think their music's amazing and they're great guys. But yeah, Jesse and I have been friends for a really long time. Rebounder opened up for The Neighborhood really early days. And the guy that Jesse mixes all of his music with and kind of his like his, his co-production partner, this guy named Danny. And Danny mixes Chip Chrome and the Monotones album. And Danny mixes a lot of new Rebounder music and a lot of the new stuff. I was in LA mixing all of this new music, premium fantasy, chain shapes, stuff that's coming out, young folks, at, with Danny Parra at his studio. And Jesse and I were always hanging out and he heard that song, Chain Shapes, and it was kind of like half done. And it was like, maybe we can fit it in. Maybe we can't, we'll see if we can get it done in time. And then he was like, oh, I love it. I want to be on it. And I was like, okay. And then and then he got on it. And then, uh, and then we shot the video like a day or so later in the studio kind of jump, jumping around. And that was, that was a fun time. We covered Young Folks, we played like a roof. We played this party in New York on our friend's roof and it was really fun. And it was like, the cop shut it down. It was really loud. And we were gonna play all these new songs. And we were like, okay, we gotta, if we're gonna play all these new songs. We gotta play a song that people know. And so we thought we'd cover that song because we loved it from Gossip Girl. First episode, you know, that scene on the train. It's like big, that's my favorite show ever. So we thought, It'd be a fun cover because uh, I think a good cover is a song that everyone knows, but you don't listen to that day. You know, like if I covered the big Drake song, you already heard it today. You heard it on out of a car radio, but young folks, maybe you haven't heard in a while. So we covered it and it went really good. And then we were like, all right, we should. Then we played it on tour. It was so much fun. And then we decided, you know what, let's record it. So we came home and recorded it and recorded it in the studio that I'm in right now. And uh, and it was and it just worked out. It's a fun song. I think it's kind of like a a song for many different generations, older than us, younger than us. So I thought, why not? Yeah, we love Peter Brown. I love their whole album. 
I love all their that writer's block album. That whole record's great, and a lot of their new stuff too. And they posted on their Instagram, and I was like, "Ooh, Theater Born and John, that's big for me." Day Glow, when we were touring with him, he was covering Vampire Week and Sunflower. Da 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 da. And everyone knew it, and I was like, "That's a good idea," because I was covering Leonard Cohen's Iodine, or Memories, or like songs that are like very special, important to me. Because Leonard Cohen's he's number one, but maybe the audience doesn't know them as well. And Dayglo was playing songs that people knew, and I was like, "That's a good idea." And so he gave me that idea to cover a song that people knows, which is kind of how we made Young Folks, because I was like, "We should do a song that people actually know." I don't know. I feel like you learn tricks and trades from all of them. You know, the neighborhood, they just like sound really good. And they taught me a lot about gear and taught me a lot about like how to sound good in different situations. Dayglo taught me how to work an audience. I feel like you learn. We always watch the shows that people are opening up for and you always take something from them. So I think they've all they've taught us a lot of stuff in their own ways. But I can't I don't know if it's anything like really specific that I could like bring up, you know. I think it's really important to be able to make stuff yourself i think if you can't make stuff yourself it's really hard so for instance me and my brother we play instruments forever we've been writing songs forever but we couldn't produce and we had to like spend two years just like sitting in this room like learning how to produce so i think the more the more of it that you can control the easier it is you know recording going to a studio is very expensive but if you can teach yourself to record off the internet off youtube on a computer it gets pretty easy. So I just say, try to learn as much as you can because the more stuff you know, the more powerful you'll be. You know, like I, I drum, but I didn't want to learn how to drum. But now I can, now I, now I always know a drummer, you know? Obviously I'm not as good as Rebounder's drummer, Kobe, but I can, I can hold the beat and that's made my life a little easier. So I'd say just learn a lot of different skills that make your life easier. So you don't have to call people because maybe then you can move faster and I want to move fast.